So guys, I have been going through the comments on my LG Dual Inverter AC review videos and a lot of you guys want to know how much energy does an inverter AC consume. And since we are in the peak summers right now, it's really the best time to do an energy consumption test. Okay, so take a look at this. I bought this energy consumption meter and this one is from a brand called Meko. And this will tell us accurately how much energy in kilowatt hours we are consuming and it will also show us how many watts this AC is pulling from the wall. But before we begin, I want to explain how an inverter AC works. Inverter ACs are also known as variable tonnage ACs because they can change their cooling capacity by changing the tonnage according to the heat load inside your room. So a 1.5 ton unit can also work as a 1 ton and some models can even reduce the tonnage down to 0.5 tons. This works by slowing down the compressor speed. And this particular model from LG allows you to manually reduce the tonnage or slow down the compressor. You can just press the watt option button and save energy by forcefully running the AC at just 40% of its maximum capacity. That is awesome. Okay, so once you turn on an inverter AC, it will go to full power. And as you will see shortly. So look at this, after about 3 minutes, the AC is now at maximum power. So it's pulling about 1.8 kilowatts from the wall, so 1,788. That's quite a bit of juice. And I've set the temperature to 26 degrees Celsius, and it will pull this much power from the wall until the room temperature comes down to 26 degrees. And once the room temperature is down to 26 degrees, you will see that the power consumption will drop. That's because the inverter AC will slow the compressor down. So it's been a few minutes since the AC has been running. And as you can see, the room temperature is down to 26 degrees Celsius. And the thermostat on the AC is also set to 26 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, the power consumption has also dropped. So the AC is only pulling about 600 watts from the wall. So guys, this is how an inverter AC works. When the temperature of the room drops to the temperature you set on the thermostat, the AC slows down the compressor, thereby reducing the tonnage. And it also consumes less electricity, as you can see on the meter. So this is a non-inverter AC from LG and this is a 1 ton unit and right now it's consuming around 1.1 kilowatts. So I just turned it on in about 2 minutes and the room temperature is 31 degrees. So as soon as the room temperature drops to 26, the compressor will just switch off. It will not slow down, it will just switch off and then the compressor will turn back on again once the temperature rises about 1 to 2 degrees. Now look at this, once the set temperature has been reached, the compressor turns off and this is the power consumption of the indoor unit fan. And uh, as you can see I've set the temperature 26, the uh, room temp, and room temp is right now 24. So the compressor on a non-inverter AC turns off completely, rather than slowing down as on an inverter AC. Okay, so as you can see, once the room temperature rises, the compressor starts back up. So where's the temperature button? So it's now 27 degrees, the compressor has started back up. And you can see we are pulling 1.1 kilowatts from the wall. So this is how a non-inverter AC works. When the set temperature has been achieved, the compressor just turns off. And once the temperature rises 1 to 2 degrees above the set temperature, the compressor will start back up as you guys have just seen. Okay, so before we begin this overnight energy consumption test, you might want to know a few things about my room. So my room is about 163 square feet in size. I live on the top floor. So that wall gets direct sun and so does the ceiling. So the ceiling and that wall gets quite warm. So the next thing you guys should know is the heat load in my room. The only thing that remains turned on during the night time is my computer. So that computer will be running all the time and when this computer is idle it only consumes about 40 to 50 watts. And yes I do use my ceiling fan, it kind of helps circulate the cool air coming from the AC. And lastly you guys should also know the outdoor temperature. We are in the middle of summers and right now the outdoor temperature is 34.1 degrees celsius. So the weather app is showing 32 degrees celsius at 2.38 am. And I think this might be correct. The location I live at, it's slightly warmer than usual. Okay, so coming back to our mirror, let me quickly explain to you guys what you're seeing on the LCD screen so you guys can also make sense. So what you're seeing here on the LCD is the power factor, which is 0.992, pretty good. Then on the bottom here, you're seeing the active power, which is represented in kilowatts, so 0.6 kilowatts is being consumed by the AC. 
Now if I press this button, it takes you to a different screen. So we have two numbers here. So the top part is the amps. So this AC is pulling about 3 amps and the bottom one is something that we are interested in. The bottom one is active energy which is represented in kilowatt hours. So this is what you are built for. So right now it is showing 1.2 units have been consumed. So let's check the time. So in about 1 hour and 20 minutes we have consumed 1.2 units. So if you press on this one it will show you the time. And this energy usage time only works when the AC is running. So if I turn the AC off, this counter will also stop. So this will let you know how much I've used the AC. Okay, so I have reset all the numbers on the meter. So the timer reads zero. And let's see, kilowatt hours also read zero. So now let's turn the AC on. And the temperature I'm keeping the AC is on 26 degrees Celsius. And you know what, I'm going to reduce the temperature to 25 and I'm going to put the AC on sleep mode. So let's set the timer for 6 hours. So that should give you an idea of the power consumption of this AC in 6 hours. Oh and by the way guys, the AC is running at 100% power. So I'm not using this watt option button over here. And also you guys might have noticed I've set the temperature to 24 degrees Celsius. That's because on these LG ACs when you put them in sleep mode, the temperature automatically rises 2 degrees in about an hour. So 24 should become 26 in about 1 hour. So 24 is just fine. And just so you guys know, the AC is pulling about 1263 watts from the wall. That is because the room temperature is quite warm. So let's see. So we are starting this test from 29 degrees Celsius. So I did let the room warm up a little bit before we started this test. This number will come down as the temperature of the room drops. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes since the AC has been running. Now it's only pulling about 526 watt from the wall. And that is quite energy efficient. So that's only 0.5 kilowatts. Okay, so I will be back in the morning and I will show you guys how many units this AC has consumed. Alright guys, it is now morning, the AC has switched itself off. Now let's take a look at our energy consumption during the night time. So first, energy usage time. We have been running the AC for 6 hours and 11 minutes. Extra 11 minutes because I turned the AC back on after it switched off. And now let's press this one. Okay guys, so this is the result. We have consumed 3.56 units of electricity during our 6 hour 11 minutes of use uh, with this LG dual inverter AC. So that's a pretty decent result. So if you want to know how much money you've spent during the night time running the AC, just multiply this number with the rate of electricity you are built for from the power company. So once again guys, this AC has consumed 3.5 kilowatt hours at night during its 6 hour and 11 minutes run. So I would say this LG dual inverter AC is quite energy efficient and for the most part during the night time the power consumption was about 500 to 600 watts. So it does not consume much energy during the night time because outside temperature is also nice and cool. So during the night time the AC was consuming around 550 watts to maintain the room temperature. So now it's daytime and the outdoor temperature is also quite high. So we are at about 43.1 degrees Celsius. And I've set the room temperature to 27 degrees. So for summers, I feel 27 degrees is quite comfortable. And since I'm also using the ceiling fan, it's nice and comfortable. So the room temperature is also down to 27 degrees right now. AC is set to 27. And let's check the power consumption. So on a 43 degrees Celsius day, to maintain the room temperature, this AC is only pulling about 777 watts from the wall. So that's 0.7 kilowatts. So yeah, that's pretty decent. It's keeping the room nice and cool. And the energy consumption is also quite low. Now when you do turn the AC on, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to cool the room down. At that time, it will consume 1.8 kilowatts. But as soon as the temperature drops, the power consumption will also drop. So guys, it has been 24 hours since this meter has been plugged in. And as you can see, I've used my AC for 13 hours and 22 minutes. It's right now 3, 6 a.m. And we started the test around 3, 11 a.m. yesterday. So yeah, it's been complete 24 hours. And then let's see our energy consumption. So we have consumed 8.33 kilowatt hours. 
and you can do the calculations yourself. Electricity rates kind of vary from region to region. I think this is quite reasonable considering it's peak summer time and the daytime temperatures touch around 43 degrees Celsius and the night temperatures are also quite warm. And this result should give you an idea on how much energy does an inverter AC consume in 24 hours. It really does not cost me that much to run this AC. And the level of comfort this thing provides in peak summers is just unmatched. Also, the power consumption does depend upon a lot of factors. Some of them are number one, the brand and the model of your inverter AC. Number two, the age of your inverter AC. The newer inverter AC models consume less power and mine is about three and a half years old. So do keep that in mind. Newer ones are more efficient. Number three, maintenance of your inverter AC. You must keep the condenser and the filters clean for the best energy efficiency. Number four, the size of your room. My room is about 163 square feet. If you have a smaller room, your AC will consume less power. If you have a big room, then your AC will consume more power because there is more area to cool down. Number five, number of people in the room and the heat load. The only heat load during this test was a desktop PC and two people sleeping in the room. Number six, how well your room is insulated. My room is pretty well insulated and sealed, so that helps keeping the energy consumption down. Number of windows and the doors you've got and the number of sun facing walls in your room. Typically, if you live on the top floor, your ceiling will also get warm. I live on the top floor by the way, so my ceiling and this front wall gets direct sunlight. Number 8. The temperature you set your AC to. I usually run my AC at 26 degrees Celsius during summers. If you set a lower temperature like 22 degrees, then you will use a lot more power. So keep the AC at an appropriate temperature. The goal of having an air conditioner is to feel comfortable, not freeze to death. And lastly, the most important thing, the outdoor temperature. If the outdoor temperature is very high, then your AC will consume more power to cool down your room. Also, as a standard practice, whenever you get your AC installed, have it installed in a location where it does not receive direct sunlight. Because in direct sunlight, it will get quite hot and if the outdoor unit gets very hot, the efficiency will drop because there won't be enough heat removal from the refrigerant and the condenser coils. And not to mention the inverter drive is in the outdoor unit and on a 45 degree day, the surface receiving dark sunlight is well above 50 degrees Celsius. So you can imagine how hot does the inverter PCB get. So it's best to have your inverter AC installed in a location where there is a shade. That will prolong the life of your inverter AC and your AC will be more efficient. Also, I've made a video on how to save electricity with an AC. Do check that out. The video link is right here. So guys, that brings us to the end of this video. And I hope this video was helpful and you guys get an idea on how much electricity does an inverter AC consume. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them. And if you like my content, don't forget to press the like button and follow me on social media accounts. All the links are down in the video description. So guys, thank you for watching. Do stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.